let's delve into the significance of confession and why it plays a vital role. One of my passions is hearing confessions. Not because I relish knowing people's secrets, in fact, I barely remember anything shared during confessions. It's a phenomenon I call divine forgetfulness. What truly fascinates me about confession is that it's a place of redemption, where people return to Jesus. It's truly remarkable. However, sometimes when someone returns to confession after an extended absence, they might say, Father, it's been 30 years since my last confession, 50 years even. Alright, what do you need to confess? Well, I was a bit impatient with my spouse, or I was too hard on my kids, or something along those lines. That's it? After all these years? Alright, I say, let's take a step back. I ask a question that I nearly always pose during confessions, has God been the top priority in your life? Have you placed other things above Him? Often, the response is, I'm not sure. I've tried to be a good person. That's commendable, but that's not the question. The question isn't, have you tried to be a good person? Because when we measure ourselves against that standard, we often think, well, I'm not as bad as I could be. But the truth is, you're probably not as good as you could be either, so that's not a valid comparison. Our goodness is measured against God Himself, not the people we know. So, let's revisit this, I try to be a good person. Alright, that wasn't the question. The question is, is God the central focus of your life? Because if anything other than God holds that position, that's the first thing we need to confess every time we go to confession. The older we get, the more things vie for the top spot in our hearts. When it comes to confession, especially as adults, we must acknowledge that one of the primary sins we commit is not putting God at the center, we relegate Him to the sidelines. Moving on, another aspect of confessing like an adult is understanding the concept of sin. Someone might say, I don't know. I haven't really harmed anyone. That's good, but that's not what sin is. Here's my definition of sin, it's not necessarily a defiant act against God, nor does it always involve harming others. It's not just a mistake or an accident. Sin, at its core, is this, God, I know what you want me to do, but I want to do what I desire instead. That's sin, knowing God's will and choosing to do otherwise. So, when you reflect on your life and say, when I was in second grade, God wanted me to obey my parents, be kind to my siblings, and not cheat at school, those were the things you knew God wanted. But now, at 25 or 55, what does God want for your life? If you're unsure where to begin, the church provides guidelines tailored to your age and life circumstances. Don't use an examination of conscience meant for second graders if you're an adult, or one designed for single individuals if you're married. There are even comprehensive examinations of conscience for specific groups, like priests, that delve into deep introspection. So, first, find a suitable examination of conscience. Second, consider the Litany of Humility by Cardinal Mary Deval, a prayer that addresses the desire for recognition and love. It acknowledges areas in your life where you prioritize self over others. Third, explore Jesus' teachings in the Beatitudes. Jesus blessed the meek, the merciful, and the peacemakers. Do you embody these qualities in your life? Assess whether you live according to these values or not. Finally, delve into the consciousness examine, introduced by St. Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Jesuits, an order to which Pope Francis belongs. It's a different concept than an examination of conscience. Here are the steps. Begin with prayer, asking the Holy Spirit for guidance, especially when you're unsure what to confess. Next, review your day, recalling each moment. Acknowledge the times you said yes to God's grace and the times you said no. Express gratitude for the former and seek forgiveness for the latter, presenting them to Jesus. Remember, it's not just about sin, it's about nurturing your relationship with God. So, before anything else, ask yourself, is God at the center of my life, or is He on the sidelines? The extent to which you live from this relationship shapes your actions. God, I recognize your presence, thank you. God, I knew you were guiding me, but I chose to follow my desires, 
I'm sorry. I assure you that if you adopt any of these approaches and practice, 